Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and caffeine addict. And today, we are going to be checking out a much requested video. This is Space Station 13 Review. A help clown Griff, please ban he, TM. By Sizich. Sizich. I, I... I don't know if anyone knows how to pronounce this guy's name. But before we get started, first, check out the merch store. I have new swag, and I'm adding new swag all the time. And if there is something that you would like to see for sale, uh, you just let me know. I can throw it together pretty quick. Second, we've launched a Discord. That's right. Check the link in the description for the Discord. It is, of course the place to hang out. That's where I do most of my you know, replying to random stuff, but also it's just hilarious. There's art, cursed images, memes, weird content about Warhammer and Team Fortress 2. So it's definitely worth hanging out in. So having done that, let's get into it. People, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a very niche, very infamous, and very autistic game that everyone's asked me to cover since day one. A game where you and many other real, living people with questionable social intelligence roleplay together on the worst space station in the universe, where- What? Okay, do I- this- this seems really blurry to me already. Alien. Is this- is this just because the game is terrible, or- or do I have my YouTube settings, like, turned way down? Uh, I just turned it up. Yeah, 720. Okay, maybe this game is just weird and pixelated. Shapeshifters and traitors working for rival corporations are the least of your concern, where the greatest threat to your own existence are your own crew members. Hungry? Come to the station canteen, where the food is definitely poisoned. Injured? Head on down to medical, where half a medication has been relabeled as happy pills. Discouraged? You can try taking a painkiller instead. But it wasn't a painkiller, it was LSD. Having a bad trip? Don't worry, there's a security officer nearby to help, but he can't respond because he was murdered and replaced by a genetically modified monkey wearing his uniform. Is this all real? Who made this game? Hallucinating? Keep calm and focus on what's- Are you a spider? It's real. Unfortunately for you, the supermassive black hole expanding towards you is not a hallucination. It is, in fact, very real. W what? What is this game? The emergency shuttle has been called. Welcome to Space Station 13. Space Station 13 has a very simple premise. Everyone has a job. Your objective? Do your best to delay the station's inevitable destruction, either at the hands of antagonists or at the hands of your own incompetent crew. Normally, I give a final score for a game at the end of a video. Not this time. Space Station 13, 10 out of 10. Amazing. Spectacular. Don't play it. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, Space Station 13 is a fantastic game, but I genuinely don't recommend you play it. Why? Because the engine it's running on is probably older than you, because the interface is a convoluted mess, and only usable because me and every other autistic chimpanzee who plays this game has committed the hotkeys to muscle memory because- What? What is this? I wanna know- uh, here's the real question. I now have to know- the history of the development of this game. I want to meet the madman who created this. And I want to know what drugs he was on so I can never, ever take them. Because of the insane time investment and commitment required for you to learn a single role. And because, to be perfectly honest, the servers can't handle all of you. At best, we could handle, like, 30 extra players before you grind the servers to a halt. For all of these reasons, Space Station 13 always was and always will be a niche title. And maybe that's for the best. But I can offer you something else. I've already killed your hopes and dreams of playing the game, so... This sounds terrifying. Why is Ronald McDonald in space? Instead, let me share some stories of my wonderful experience with Space Station 13. These stories span several years and several different servers, the names of which will forever stay anonymous because I respect their privacy and because I've received threats from some of the more colorful servers to not mention them by 
my name, or else, what's gonna happen if I don't comply? Are they gonna hire a Bitcoin assassin to run me over with his mobility scooter? Is he gonna stab me with his insulin pen? I don't know, but between you and me, I hate having cum delivered to my mailbox and would prefer to keep it that way. Anyway. What? What? Is that a, is that the, the threat that he was implied? What am I even watching? I remember the first time playing- I was really hoping to provide some sort of commentary, but this would be best suited to Hunter S. Thompson. Actually, actually, one moment. Okay, let's try to channel some of America's best gonzo journalist. And whatever we do, we can't stop here because this is back country. So let's just keep going. We're two or three minutes into this 22 minute extravaganza. And I'm playing not Space stop. Station very vividly. My friends told me to download it and hop on some shitty server. It had furries and erotic roleplay. Whoa, heavy roleplay server. And okay, that's a cat man. More on that later. I enter the round as an assistant. My job to give assistance and to get my hands burnt off trying to hack into places I don't have access to. As I'm screwing around with pulse, you can just pull what what? Quinn Harding's ID. I'm trying to see what's happening. Quinn Harding ex exclaims, hey, waves. Looks like the other doc is something. Bing bong, your opinion is wrong. Has thrown the oxygen tank. That Salem, she is small. You feel a powerful shock. Your head hurts. You put the multi-tool into the electrical tool. The airlock wires. My friend comes running down the hallway, dragging someone's unconscious body. Frantically, he tells me, Seth, quick, can you open this door? Sensing the urgency in his voice, I do. He throws the body inside and sprints away. The airlock closes. Three seconds what? later, something explodes. What the fuck was that? I ask. Oh yeah, I fed him potassium and water pills. It takes a while to metabolize. My friend had just murdered a man in cold blood by turning his body into a living, ticking potassium bomb. Yeah, if you've never seen potassium explode, it reacts very badly with water. And unfortunately, we squishy human beings are like 70% water. So, yeah, they were going to see some fireworks. Though, I think it takes a little more than one or two potassium pills. I think to make an explosion large enough to destroy a wing of a space station of this size you would have to do like a uh, like like that scene in the hurt locker where they cut that dude open and then put a bomb in him and sewed it shut again uh which by the way based on real life events uh yeah you would need a lot of potassium to pull that off and frankly it would just be easier to use <sighs> i'm gonna get demonetized if i tell you just have faith there's better options. As soon as the man's digestive juices cracked through the potassium tablet, it reacted violently with the water in his stomach and exploded, killing him from inside out. After such a horrific display of homicide, I realized, hey, this game's pretty good. Fast forward a few weeks and I'm learning roles, calling shots, and ignoring every single rule of a server. I also ignored every single rule of medicine. I was a surgeon, top of my class, destined to go where no licensed professional ever has. Is that man dragging a bleeding monkey with an oxygen mask? Because that seems like not even the weirdest thing that we're going to see in this video. Also, my friend's girlfriend started playing with us. To put it bluntly, she wasn't very good, but she was very- I mean, can you- does this game even lend itself to ideas of good or bad? This- this seems like doing things which are morally bad and being bad at the game are almost indistinguishable. Very interested in progressing the medical field in any way possible. Cargo had just delivered us some complimentary pizza. As thanks for patching up their boys after they got a little too intimate with a xenomorphs on mining station. Brilliance. F I didn't think you could patch someone up from that. I thought the acid spit would just chew right through you. 
before my eyes. My pupils widened. I started physically sweating because she said the words I've always dreamt of hearing. Please turn me into a pizza. And so I got to work. Nurse, get me my scalpel, tweezers, protractor, bone gel, and the rest of the unfinished pizza. One horrified clown watched in the operating theater as I- There's an operating theater? They don't even have those in mo the modern world. Why, and why would you waste valuable space station, uh, you know, real estate on an operating theater? Cleanly hacked off and cauterized her hands and feet. I opened the pizza box and began attaching her new cheesy limbs. Help! Sec to surgery! The clown blurted out. He's turning her into a Papa John's. <laughs> okay, if you're gonna get turned into a pizza, Papa John's is by far the worst. You know when they say better ingredients, better pizza? That's because they don't specify what the ingredients are. You think that's cheese? It's not. You notice, if you look carefully, you'll observe that every single ingredient Papa John's offers, not a one of them, requires refrigeration. Every single one of them can be produced in a, or a facsimile of it, can be produced in a shelf-stable or cannibal manner. Those mushrooms, you can get mushrooms in a can. You can get those pepperoncini peppers in a can. Pepperoni, you can make shelf stable. They sell it in plastic packages in the grocery store. Not one thing Papa John sells requires refrigeration. So here's what you should ask yourself when you're ordering a pizza. Why would I order a pizza that bacteria, single cell life forms that are meant to be able to consume all other organic matter for sustenance won't touch this Papa John's pizza? That's almost, and maybe in a way, I don't know. You would never, no, no, you would never want that to be augmented to your body, right? You'd be better off just having titanium screws put in. The head of medical stormed in with a host of security officers to detain me, but they were too late. Pagliacci, the anal clown is beautifully, has beautifully honks Pagliacci the anal clown in the chest with the gilded bike horn. Did they... What? Her hands and feet had already been replaced. Surprisingly, she could walk just fine on a pair of pizza feet. But her lack of opposable pizza thumbs meant that she couldn't really hold anything, let alone pick them up in the first place. However, the, the programming skill that it would require to program a game in which you can remove someone's arms and permanently alter gameplay by replacing them with pizza. I mean, you could do it, but, but, but could he have also replaced her arms with uh, that lab coat or medical equipment or his own it seems like it seems possible in this game though does it just depend on role play commitment However, her pizza hands did make for a convenient and portable source of nutrition. Despite her numerous protests that she consented to the surgery, the head of medical demoted me on the spot and banned me from ever practicing medicine, claiming that you can't consent to being a pizza. I mm. Mm. That is a moral question best left to the philosophers, right? And unless that person, that head of medicine, is a doctor of philosophy, I don't think they're in a position to make that judgment. I was thrown in jail for the rest of a round. Clearly, there was no appreciation for the arts on this station. So, many rounds later, me and my friends found a new purpose. Cleaning up the server, one erotic furry roleplay at a time. Using telecommunications and metacommunications, I expertly pinpointed areas of high homosexual intent, namely, the dorm rooms and the showers. As two Khajiit look cat men meet privately with one another, they will inevitably start writing words such as, Ooh, my act has a barbed prickly surprise for you, my friend, and- Wow, this is horrible. This is horrible. I think Hunter, even Hunter S. Thompson would be disgusted and horrified by all this. Though R.I.P. to the legend. I mean, that's a dude who, talk about consenting to becoming a pizza, in his will he has to be cremated and then have his remains shot out of a cannon. And, mm, yes, not me with your thick Tajaran trunk. This is completely unacceptable. Once an act of high homosexual intent is in motion, several of our men would mobilize. As they groan, moan, and spit out hairballs on each other, a security officer would barge in, flashbang the feline fornicators, and tag team baton them into submission before another officer handcuffs them to the bed. On the other side of a contaminated dorm room, our team's atmospheric technician sets explosive C4 charges. How? Who programmed all this? 
This is so such elaborate programming. Against the station glass. Quickly, we evacuate the biohazard exclusion zone and seal the airlocks. Homeo and Juliet barely have enough time to recover from the flashbang before the charges detonate, depressurizing the room and sucking their bodies out into the black vacuum of- The fact that they d programmed a depressurization mechanic is wild, given the fact that they have, like, no discernible- graphics at all space another job well done many explosive decompressions later erotic roleplay was considered a real occupational hazard the tajaran cat boys got creative started doing group sessions instead but these were quickly crushed by my friend playing the best roboticist i've ever seen in my life the airlock doors to their sodomy chamber were welded shut to prevent interruptions so he drilled right through them with a gigantic combat mech the air inside Wait, this game also has combat mechs in the space station. Again, how does a combat mech walk if there's no gravity? It was heavy with a sickly sweet smell of wet fur balls and toxoplasmosis. The furry. Oh, that's interesting. That's a real disease carried by cats, which we actually find also in humans. And that f there's some people that believe that it actually alters humans' mental state slightly didn't even have time to react before he started unloading shell after shell of flashbang grenades and thus we all got banned we paid the price but to see half the server get flashbanged unconscious for 10 minutes straight priceless the server didn't last long anyway the admin's mom shut it down as soon as she saw the electricity bill so me and my friends went on to enrich other servers i even got good at being a chemist in other words i always stole the syringe gun at the start of a round and filled it with lethal doses of chloral hydrate. For I love how someone programmed in what chloral hydrate does to the body. For my own protection, of course. I also gave whatever chemical- Is he a lizard man? Cause this is basically the exact same problem of the furries. Anyone? And actually, as a lizard man, you are the prey of a cat requested, which gives me some moral ambiguity and two degrees of separation from any pranks or murders that took place as a result of said chemicals. If a clown asks for space lube, he's gonna get space lube. One time, a clown managed to lube the entire hallway outside of medical, all the way to- It has a lube mechanic? The departures. Now, departures is usually the place where the escape shuttle docks to get us out of our quickly burning heap of a station. However, if there's no call for a shuttle, departures is completely empty, besides the airlock, which the clown had hacked open. Several people came running through medical, slipped on the space loop, and accelerated themselves face first into the infinite vacuum. What? How is this? So this game is two-dimensional, crudely pixelated, but has elaborate decompression physics. I'm so confused. Team of space. Security figured out it was the clown, and in true security fashion, also slipped on the space loop, with most of the crew floating around dead in- I mean, really, they're slipping on- it looks like blood and viscera at this point, more than the loop itself. Space. The station had to be evacuated. He was later banned from playing clown ever again. Several rounds later, I finally spawned as a traitor. Mission specifications decrypted. Welcome to the Syndicate. And I had no idea- do you need anything mixed? Do you have brain damage? You are the chemist. What the posit- I'm, I'm just reading some of these messages. The positonic brain f buzzes quietly and the golden lights fade away. Perhaps you could try again. The solution begins to bubble. You add the beaker into the Chem Master 3000. Whew. Maybe this is like a game that's like 20 years old, but like every year people are adding more weird mods. And so this game has like 400 million mods. So like one person was just like, I'm going to add a lubrication mechanic. And that was it what I was doing. But I wanted my first time to be special. Conveniently, an assistant comes in, bleeding all over, because he was, probably, trying to break into the armory without insulated gloves. His character sprite had maximum melanin and an afro. His roleplay friendly name was Madik. An idiot, but a useful idiot. There were no medical staff on hand except me, so I said, hey, I know a little bit of surgery. Let me fix you up. I put him under general anesthetic and took out huh. my syndicate 
Pocket PDA. With this, I can discreetly teleport a few traitor items into my inventory to help me achieve my objective, which in this case was murdering the head of security. I ordered two sets of voice-activated explosives, which trigger. This has a lot of fun mechanics. Upon hearing the recorded code phrase, I set this to the word most likely to be spoken by this mentally retarded human being. Can you guess what that is? I surgically opened his ass and inserted the first of the explosives. Then I lodged the second one neatly inside his chest cavity. Closing them up, I took off the anesthetic and began to put my plan in action. I would arm this simple-minded moron with illegal weaponry with the hopes that security would detain him on on possession charges. I gave him all the LSD, all the chloral hydrate syringes, and an entire spray bottle of space lube. I had expertly equipped him to be the ultimate griefing machine. Proud of my work, I gave him a hug and set him loose on- I love the fact that he's taking this clearly horrendous uh, racist and is going to use him as a human bomb the world. But just before he left medical, he turned around and said, Thanks, nigger. And we both exploded. My other times playing antagonist went about just as well. Once I started as the leader of a cult, our objective was to seize control of the station and sacrifice our mortal bodies to summon a physical manifestation of our dark god. However, Dude, yes, that's a great mission. That's, that, that is the most wholesome mission I've heard, because, you know... Purging this space station in the name of chaos is it seems like a noble goal at this point Ever, I wasn't very good at it and neither were my servants We found a nice quiet and most importantly abandoned bar near the north end of the station Which we began redecorating with our own blood you see cultists need to learn a set of ancient words That's randomly generated every round if you arrange them in the right order You can perform different spells and rituals to advance your goals. We didn't get far because the most dangerous thing to an incompetent cult is a single crew member doing their job. The fucking janitor found us. We try to negotiate, convince him that it's actually crayon and not blood all over the floor. But that didn't work, so we try to murder him instead. Then yeah, that seems like the, the plan they should have started with. You're a murderous cult! You're a blood cult! You're gonna murder any everyone anyway! That didn't Plus, he he's full of blood! This is easy. This is a win-win. Didn't work either. He used his mop to slip us with soapy water and ran off to call security. As you can see, I'm not very proficient at being a traitor. More often, I find myself being abused by traitors. Some of the worst offenders in this regard are definitely wizards, since wizards have a bad tendency to sexually abuse me as well. Not too- Oh. That's not okay. It's not okay. It's about consent long ago, me and my friends played a round that was already in progress. As soon as we entered, we realized something was very- The station has received reliable information about possible hostile activity on station security. May have weapons visible. Random searches are permitted. Very wrong. An announcement played on the radio. Penis inspection day is in effect. All crew members must report to Doc Johnson for their mandatory penis inspection. Doc Johnson was, very clearly, a wizard. I knew what was coming, and yet, I resigned myself to fate and went to medical reception. Doc Johnson was overjoyed to have new patients. He led me to a private room, asked me if I'm circumcised, and told me that I passed the inspection with flying colors. What a surprise, I thought. He's not actually gonna grief me. But I was wrong. As I turned away to leave, he blew off my ass magically. Hey, it's wizardry. I ain't gotta explain shit. Anyway, yeah, I guess if you got a wizard, you could just and you could summon a dark god. Though honestly, based on Warhammer 40k at this point, uh, you know the dark god is the least unrealistic part of all this. Doc Johnson is a terrible doctor. He left me bleeding on the floor as he took my ass cheeks and used them as a hat. Highly unprofessional. Maybe he's one of the cultists. Professional would not recommend. A round of Space Station 13 can be very intense. At other times, it can be very slow paced and almost relaxing. If you're not a traitor and you don't have anything urgent to handle, you can always just role play and get comfy in a bar while the piano plays anime songs and the jukebox plays whatever deep fried ASMR bullshit people keep putting on. It's a very- Jesus, it sounds punishing. Makes me, it's summoning, chanting to the dark god sounds 
therapeutic compared to this. Wholesome experience, and it helps you get emotionally invested with the other members of your crew, which are often nice people. However, security is often staffed by egotistical megalomaniacs acting out their most depraved power fantasies. They Nothing like real world security personnel. They are often not nice people. As a result of their inherent propensity to be insane sociopaths, the rest of the crew will often rebel against their tyranny. In one such case, Cargo. Cargo declares itself an independent, freedom-loving station state. You are not subject to the laws of the greater station. Mona Picard. Help you understand our needs and rights to demand secession as an unrefutable right of, to self-actualization. A newly made station state of Cargonia. Holy smokes. Who had declared independence. Security refused to recognize the independent station. That you have a legal weapon reward from our shuttle deliveries. <laughs> There's no such thing as a station constitution state of Cargonia, so they try to barge their way in and arrest everyone involved, including me. But security was unprepared for the trap we had in store. One officer rushed into Cargo Bay and slipped on a banana peel straight into the conveyor belt waiting for him. He tried repeatedly to get back up, only to be tripped again by an ocean of banana peels on the conveyor belt, which looped around in a circle. Surrounding that circle was another circle, composed entirely of vending machines. The <laughs> officer was also being brutal assaulted by several hundred cans of soda. The vending machines were hacked, and as a result, they would continuously fire drinks at whoever is in the area. Each officer- What? What is this mechanic? You could be soda machined to death? That guy- the, 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 the guy from Investment Joy would lose his mind. That's thousands of dollars worth of quarter coin-operated vending machines just- used for the nefarious purpose of murdering someone. Observe that slipped into the banana belt, got smashed unconscious by a relentless stream of discount Dan soda. Trademark, all rights reserved. After extensive head trauma by our soda turrets, security reluctantly accepted Cargonia's- Just get my men back at Doge Shift the rest of the station. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you do here. Independence and more people should just take that stance. And their right to bear arms. If there's one department that has more revolutions than cargo, it would have to be science. And it's easy to understand why. We spend our <laughs> lives researching away for the good of a station, which does of course carry its own share of risks and hazards. Sometimes accidents happen. Sooner or later, some bored and mentally challenged assistant will try and put a bag of holding into another bag of holding. And security can't always comprehend that we're not directly responsible for the resulting black hole eating through the kitchen. This lack <laughs> of course of appreciation for the scientific profession usually ends with arrest warrants for the whole department, which is usually answered back with the words, I'd like to see you try. But when we're not having a nuclear arms race with security, R&D is actually quite a chill department. I also made a great discovery last time I played there. Me and another scientist were messing around with blueprints and eventually made ourselves a pneumatic cannon. Normally, these are used to- You have pneumatic cannon? This- th I- I- wh What? What? Launch whatever items you have inside. What we didn't know was that it could launch food as well. I loaded a lasagna, aimed for the mouth, and fired it at my fellow researcher. The lasagna disappeared. What the hell? That's amazing, he said. We just realized what happened. I had just managed to remotely force feed my fellow man. But what do we do with this forbidden knowledge? Nothing good, that's for sure. My comrade got to work asking chemistry for hallucinogenic drugs. They said no. So we built our own chemistry dispensers, filled up the beakers with happy juice, and ran straight to the kitchen. We injected all the donuts and hot pockets we could find with as much LSD and mind breaker toxin as they could hold. Then- Mind breaker toxin? This- ugh. We lo- There's- I mean, just dosing people with LSD without their consent seems wild enough. Loaded them into our food delivery system and started firing off at everyone in the hallways. The food was instantly delivered. The crew was instantly satisfied. Several people, including security officers, managed to see the two small lines of text indicating that they've just been fed something. They thought it was extremely clever and said they didn't know the pneumatic cannon could do that. Since it was just a bit of harmless fun, we got off scot-free. Minutes later, the 
hallucination started. Crew members started screaming on the radio. Some were puking, shaking, or convulsing on the ground. Medical couldn't keep up with the bodies. They piled on too quick, and most of the doctors were too busy fighting off non-existent entities to do anything about it. <laughs> I love that this game actually has hallucinations. I love that. That's maybe my favorite mechanic, is that real hallucinations are real. The chemist, who originally refused to give us LSD, was arrested by security on suspicion of intentional food poisoning. It was complete pandemonium, and I think it illustrates perfectly the chaos that is Space Station 13. What? Okay, uh, Wizard Federation members, Cheeky Toucan was pseudo-nuclear operative, died. Steal the law, planning crime, escape the shuttle, or an escape pod alive and free. The wizard knew Ethereal John and Time Stop. Additionally, the wizard brought the scrying orb. So is this just, like, telling you, revealing at the end, like, who had what and could do what? That's all I have for you today, folks. There is, of course, more stories to tell, but we'd what? literally be here for hours. Space Station 13, a marvelous, unique, and incredibly shitty game. 10 out of 10, don't play it. Because if you. Jesus. You do? They're gonna I can't blame it on me. And I hate having come in my mailbox. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. Who guys, that was weird. Uh, that was weird even by my standards, uh, and I've seen some weird, horrible things. Um, yeah, this is, um, bizarre. Bizarre. But I appreciate the fact that, um, you know what, he took us to a weird corner of the internet in an era where, frankly, there's not a lot of weird corners of the internet left, it feels like, you know? Used to be that there was some bizarro friggin' chat room that just... Just love, you know what I mean? Just just w w would be a, a, a gathering point, a beacon in the dark for weirdos. And, uh, you know, now the internet's like four sites and they're heavily policed and controlled. And while there's some, a lot, actually, bad parts of this, uh, or good parts of this, right? And there's fewer gathering grounds for, you know, pick, pick, pick your favorite horrible class of person. Uh, you do sort of lose things like this, right? Where things just sort of go off the rails. But everybody that wants to be on board that choo-choo train just sticks around and helps it go further and further into Bizarro Land. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, be sure to check out the Discord, check out the merch store, and uh, keep your eyes open for live streams. And yeah, until next time, I will see you guys.